Edward Onaja, a former chief of staff to Governor Yahya Bello, has been sworn in as the new deputy governor of Kogi State. Now, the new deputy governor's screening and swearing in came barely three days after lawmakers impeached the former deputy governor of the state, Simon Achuba. Is there more to this story? Also in Kogi, the convoy of Musawada, the PDP governorship candidate in Kogi State, was ambushed this weekend. In response, Austin Okai, the Deputy Director of Public Communications of Kogi State PDP Campaign Council, appeals to the Nigerian police in Kogi to inhibit activities of armed men accusing the suspected talks to be a PC loyalist. Still with me in the studio are Francis Chilaka, thank you very much for staying, and Olaleko Adigu, thank you very much for staying with us. Intrigues, games, politics, everything you can think of is going on in Kogi State at the moment. What, let's start with the attack on the convoy of uh, WADA. Should we begin to worry? Is this an indication of what we're to expect in the elections? I, I want to say that I'm ashamed of the Nigerian youth. Honestly, I'm really ashamed of them because um, they don't seem to understand what is happening in Nigeria. Um, they're only available to be used, but they're not useful after the usage. I feel so bad because um, uh, each time you hear that there's an attack, it's not done by the family members of these politicians. It is done by youths. And if the youths are really, really learning from what is going on, they would have looked at what has happened, played out in Edo State in recent times, where um, some youths who claimed that they had worked for Adam Soshimodi were now referred to as talks. So when the politicians need these youths to do their dirty jobs, they refer to them as vibrant youths, the leaders, the future leaders of tomorrow. But immediately they get into power, these same youths are now tagged as dogs. So what, are, what is playing out in um, Kogi State shouldn't even be playing out right now. You know, because we know that the present government in Kogi State is owing workers. Well, we'll get to that in a bit. But let's, let's look at the um, accusation by the opposition now that um, the APC is... I mean, in that part, I think it's the, um, the APC that is in power. PDP is the opposition. Now they are saying that the attack was meant to put the APC in poor light because the PDP is now accusing the APC of hiring togs. Could it just be a mere accident? Is there a political con uh, connotation or this is an opportunity to, you know, spin the story to their favor? Well... <laughs> Violence uh, in election season, particularly in Nigeria, is not a new phenomenon. Uh, we, we, we always see it. During the night, uh, 2019 election, there were uh, over 90, 98 cases of uh, violence relating to elections all over uh, the country, um, uh, about 1,852 uh, 800, uh, or so, if my memory serves sounds, uh, sounds me right, within the three months from November to uh, February uh, during the presidential and uh, governorship elections. So, Incidents of election, electoral violence is particularly not new. But what we are looking at now is a direct attack. In some cases, uh, 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 political assassinations, uh, harassment of opposition. This is uh, what is the frightening dimension that, you know, we can, it's possible you have... Uh, well, could it just be an accident that I'm had not nothing sure to do with politics? No, please. I don't want to believe that is an accident. It may probably not be APC supporters. It may just be uh, a fallout of the PDP, uh, uh, what's it called, primaries, which also was very, very violent. Yeah, the PDP primaries turned out violent, uh, violently in the stadium. So it may be a fallout of that. It may also be just a possibility now that APC supporters may have attacked uh, the, uh, the opposition, uh, uh, what's it called, the opposition candidate, uh, Wada, so we, we cannot um, I mean, independently say now, because the police seem not to have responded, in spite of the fact that um, the WADA team said they've gone to make a report. Should the police speak up, considering that the elections are just in days away, so that you know, people 
unnecessary tension doesn't rise. The people that are responsible are caught and brought to book. The truth of the matter is election violence, uh, perpetrators of election violence, even when arrested, are released almost uh, uh, after the election. I told you of in, uh, about 90-something uh, incidents of violence. Many people were arrested for different electoral offenses during the 2019 uh, Fe February and March election. Nobody has been prosecuted. Many of them have been released. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Many of them even will be, were released, even with the arms that these politicians uh, supplied them. And that is where the complication is now. Because when you talk about electoral, electoral violence, that is why I have been an advocate of electoral offenses tribunal to try electoral offenses alone independently of the traditional courts so that uh, so that these things can these cases can be faster uh, because electoral offenses are more technical than normal uh, 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 civil uh, or criminal uh, pre pre procedures okay let's look at other developments now the the screamer this afternoon was the swearing in of onoja as the new deputy governor of that state this is happening in spite of reservation and from stakeholders the mba have come out to say First off, let me ask your reaction to his inauguration. It's a slap on democracy. It's a height of insensitivity and lack of emotional intelligence. Why? The legislative arm of government should work independently of the executive. What has played out in Kogi State has led to the swearing of a new governor is the fact that um, the new deputy governor is the fact that the governor seemed to have overbearing influence on the legislators, which should not be so. You know, because I see no reason why you set up a committee to try somebody, and the committee comes out and says, This man has no case. And then you go ahead and impeach him. Two, three days later, you're putting, you're, you're, you're putting somebody else. So it's, it's, it, it, it's a fallout of the relationship between the former <laughs> deputy governor and the governor. Because I've taken time to look at the two of them. And, I've, and, I've, and I'm, I would say that the, 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 the sacked deputy governor has made his issues clear. He says, look, I do not agree with my governor based on this, 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 this. And all of that sums, sums up to what? Bad governance, lack of accountability. Achuba is is he's not agreeing that he's been impeached. He says he's going to you know challenge that decision and subsequently. And the MBA has come out to say that whatever is going on there at the moment is not constitutional. But the reality is, a new deputy governor has been installed in Kogi State just weeks to the election. What are his options? Does he have any? Well, if you ask me, uh, impeachment, as defined by the 1999 Constitution, is more of a political process than a strictly legal uh, process. Because, for example, what is um, uh, gross incompetence? Gross incompetence is as interpreted. For example, uh, if I'm the legislature, I can interpret the dress of this, my very good friend, as incompetence. Do you understand? If the governor, okay, you woke up in the morning, you didn't greet the governor's wife. <laughs> if the State House of Assembly defines that as incompetence, then it's incompetence, because that is what empowers the legislature in the Constitution. So setting up of a panel, even if the panel comes out to say, oh, you are, you, and we have seen this thing all over again. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So until we have a situation where we look at the, critically at the Constitution, where we talk about how things are done properly, how things are done in sane environment, how things, for if you set up a panel of inquiry, common sense demands that you invite me, I present my case. You saw the uh, Clinton, uh, uh, Monica, uh, Clinton, Monica Lewis. The whole thing was done in the open. When everybody was invited, this testimony, everybody, but like a normal court. Yes, the House of Representatives, uh, uh, which is the lower house, impeached him at the time, but the Senate that was supposed to claim said, no, 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 we can't find much of uh, evidence. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Because democracy presupposes procedures and processes. And that is why, what and you know I said it last time when I came here, that is what differentiates democracy from dictatorship. Because of the strict adherence to procedures. 
But we have a situation where we, de where we, where we talk about barbarism, gangsters in power. Who feels that, for example, um, the governor of uh, Kogi, who feels that, oh, he, he, and he demonstrates his power anytime he wants, he, he, that he, it's always easy to, for him to claim that he so won the 25, you're basically saying that 25 uh, members. Is out of options. No, not like it's out of options. Well, you can still approach the court. We have seen. Well, it's just days to the yeah, election. But, no, 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 no. There's still, even if it's days to the election, the swearing in does not come up immediately. It's he's been sworn in. No, as in when I say uh, the, of the new administration that is going okay. to take, is there is still time. It was done in the case of Peter Obi, for example, in 2006. It was done in the case of uh, Ladoja in Oyo State. Also in 2006, 2007. So it's not particularly uh, a, a new a, a new issue. No, you can still approach I, the I, I think what is playing out in Kogi State, we need to be very careful with this uh, um, so-called fledging democracy. We need to sit down as a people to take a second look at that 1999 constitution. That document is a problem of this country. Until we all agree to the fact that, that that document needs to be really, really checked. Because it gives a lot of power to people who do not know how to manage power. Yeah. We need to check that document. It happened in Imo State when Rochas was governor. We had about three or four deputy governors in Imo State. And everybody was claiming to be to have been sworn in. And the unfortunate thing is that we, we have a country where the legislative arm, the executive arm, and the judiciary do not seem to understand their oversight functions. Mm -hmm. Nigeria is a country where you cannot see a chief judge saying to the governor, Your Excellency, this thing you want me to do is wrong. I won't do it. Nigerians don't know how to resign. Nigerians don't know how to stand up and say this is wrong. And it is because of the clauses in the 1999 constitution. That document is the bane of our problem today. Let, let, let me quickly ask you this question, like, as you were talking. Onodja used to be a chief of staff, chief of staff. to the governor. He is also going to be his running mate in the upcoming election. One would ask, what is the haste? If he's still going to come as the governor and at the time is short, isn't there something skewed about him being um, the deputy governor now? It could be. It could be, you know, politicians, their way of thinking is, uh, is far from the way we think. It could be that the, um, suddenly Bailey has realized that if I use this man as my deputy, I will probably win the election. So the, the, the governor of uh, Kogi State right now is acting based on the fact that he wants to win an election. It's not, on, it's not based on what the people want anymore. It's based on his own desire. He wants to win an election. And so he feels that I would win an election going with Onoja rather than going with the former deputy who has disagreed with him on several issues, bordering on good governance. So he's been, he's looking at, those are the things he's looking at. He feels that this is a man that would agree to everything I want to do and say, and I would win an election with him. And that's a problem of Nigerian politicians. It's all about them. And like I was telling him before, I said, if you want to understand the mindset of a Nigerian politician, you that you are being used as a thug, go and tell him you want to marry the daughter. Then you will understand what politics is all about. Your quick response to that before I no, answer this chief of staff, chief yeah. of staff uh, understands the secrets of most of these governors than we think. Uh, that, that, that maybe, and we have seen situations where governors actually sponsor their chief of staff rather than their deputies. For example, in the case of Oji Zokadu in 2007, uh, 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 what's it called, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, using uh, Fashola was uh, So these things they have a pattern we, in Nigerian <laughs> politics. And Nigerian politics, you, you, could, you, could, you can just sit down and observe it. There, there is always a pattern to some of these things. So I'm not surprised that he actually uh, came up with his uh, chief of staff uh, as his deputy, as a political, uh, 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 as a political joker to win uh, the Kogi East. Uh, but if you're saying this, but you, you just isn't that contra uh, contradictory? You just said that as chief of staff, he knows all the shenanigans, the all the workings mm -hmm. of the. Wouldn't he be? I mean, the perfect candidate for this position. Uh, anyway, that's not the question I was going okay. to ask you. The question I'm going to ask you is. Um, there was a case, I think in 2017, against mm. Onoja. It was raised that the Senate a corruption, um, I'm, I'm not sure, about 50-something million naira misappropriated. <laughs> but that matter seems to have died along with the controversy at that time between the legislature in um, Kogi State and the National Assembly. Um, does that National play um, at the Senate? Yes. Okay. 
does that play any role now? Is it going to come up again now that he is deputy? Well, <laughs> we have so many cases with EFCC. Don't forget, as at that time, the, who, who, are the, uh, who, who has the majority in the Kogi State House of Assembly at the time? Who has the majority? APC almost have, APC have 25 members out of 25 in Kogi State House of Assembly. So you will, and the governor being the leader of the party can actually force his way on most of these uh, issues. And you will see him claiming that he won the, uh, what's it called, the, uh, the Kogi uh, House of Assembly, and they are like under his control. And that is the problem. Because most of them won partly be, uh, be, be, because of his influence. What worries you most about the political climate in Kogi State ahead of this election? What is the place of the ordinary Kogite in all of this? Violence. I am worried that the violence is going to get out of hand. I'm worried because you have a sitting governor that wants to do everything to come back to power. I'm worried that people in Kogi State themselves are not even worried as much as those of us outside. You can have a governor who hasn't paid salary for some months, several months down the line, and he still beats his chest and he says, I would want to be a governor. We need, I, I, I would say this to people, not only to Kogi State people, I keep saying it, Nigerians must begin to demand for accountability and good governance from the governors the honorable members, the local government chairman, we need to start holding them responsible. And we need to start voting people because we know they can perform. And like I keep saying, we need to go back to the 1999 constitution to make it easy to recall somebody who has not performed. That, that, process, that process is particularly technical. Seconds, that process is uh, particularly technical. Now, when you talk about socioeconomic factors and their influence on, uh, on economic factors, for example, the, uh, the Kogi state is one of the states that are owing uh, uh, several months of salaries. And these things happen. We have seen governors in Nigeria that won election distributing uh, kerosene. We have seen uh, in, in this same country, we have seen governors, money politics, the money in the hands of many of, the, of these governors are just too much. And that is why it's very, very difficult difficult to see incumbents uh, lose elections in this country. I want to say a very big thank you to you both for coming on the program. Thank you, thank you very much. Very much. Thank Always you. a pleasure. And thank you for watching uh, so far. We're not done. We're not done. We'll just go on a short break for our PLOS report. And when we return, I'll be giving my take. Please stay with us. The House of Representatives Committee on Air Force has stated that Nigerians are concerned about the security challenge. The chairman of the committee, Shewu Mohamed Koko, said this in Abuja at the inaugural meeting of the committee. He said the Air Force would get Super Tucano combat planes from the United States of America next year. The chief of air staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Baba Abubaka, disclosed that the NAF flew over 65,000 hours to provide air power and other support in the last five years. So much that is out there, so much misinformation. And I am not a politician, but I also know that I'm sure when you go back home, people try to ask you all sorts of questions. And it is only through this kind of interaction that we are able to give you the situation as it is, so that you can actually uh, interact with your people at home. In the last five years, the Nigerian Air Force has done everything humanly possible to protect the lives of Nigerians and to also protect the territorial integrity of Nigeria. This committee is for the Air Force. We are going to do whatever possible to uplift the standard of Nigerian Air Force. I promise you this and we are going to do it. As you are aware, as parliamentarians, we have taken an oath of allegiance and a membership to a whole and uphold the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 as amended, and in particular, Section 14 2B of the Constitution that provides the security and welfare of people shall be primary purpose of any government. We shall strive to uphold this section as well as other provisions of the Constitution and other extant laws to ensure that interests of Nigerians are protected.
It's time for my thoughts tonight. It has become easier more than ever before to generate and spread information. Can we avoid fake news? I think we can. All we need to do is pause when we get any information. Is it fact? Ensure to identify the source and check for context. Just as there are many tools online to create fake news, so are there many tools to fact check. Find them. Use them. Do not spread any information you are unsure of the source, so you do not put us in trouble. Thank you very much for watching the program tonight. I sincerely hope you learned something worthwhile. Until next time, please be well.